A few months ago now, I put together a Radeon RX 9070 XT roundup covering 14 models. Sadly, however, absent from that roundup was the popular Power Color Reaper. I couldn't get that one, I tried to source it, it was unavailable here in Australia, and even when reaching out to Power Color directly, they couldn't help me out because at the time they were no longer producing this model. This was due to the extreme demand for the 9070 XT, not my words, theirs. Uh, Power Color said they were focusing on producing the higher end models, and we heard this from a few other of the partners as well. Uh, presumably it's because, you know, there's greater margins to be had with those more premium models. So with them selling like hotcakes, that's where they focused their efforts. But supply is now starting to catch up with demand. And again, we were told this would happen in late 2025 uh, when attending the Computex trade show. A few of our contacts told us expect good supply of 9070 XTs in late 2025. And I think we are starting to see that now. That being the case, PowerColor has started producing the base model or MSRP cards again. And as a result, the Reaper is back on sale here in Australia. And it also happens to be the most affordable option we have at 1130 Australian dollars. And that makes it at least 20% cheaper than the most affordable RTX 5070 Ti. So that's exciting news for those after a 9070 XT. And you know what else is exciting? Today's video is brought to you by Wolfbox and their portable jump starter range. The 3000A features a 65 watt USB-C fast charger and built-in air compressor, along with enough power to revive completely dead 12 volt car batteries. This all-in-one unit sports a powerful 160 PSI compressor motor, a 400 lumen flashlight with emergency strobing ability, and is entirely supported by the 16,000 milliamp hour battery. The other model we have on hand is the 4000A, which doesn't feature the compressor, but boasts a larger 24,000 milliamp hour battery, capable of starting larger capacity batteries. Both models keep you informed on remaining battery life and other statistics with their LCD displays and can be left in moderate conditions on standby for two years, which is pretty impressive. So to learn more about Wolfbox and their jump starter offerings, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so now that the Reaper's back, I managed to get one and therefore we can now include it in our data. But I also have another really interesting 9070 XT to include as well. Recently, Gravistar reached out, offering a new product for review, and it just so happened to be a 9070 XT, which I have to say I wasn't expecting. They've made this in collaboration with Yeston. They've created the Mercury Nova OC, one of, uh, possibly if not the most unique looking 9070 XT on the market. And that's really saying something given that Yeston's known for their more uh, let's say eye-catching uh, anime inspired designs with vibrant colors schemes and yeah some crazy stuff going on i'm sure you've seen some of those over on the gamers nexus channel but we now have this version um, it's very different to say the least gravistar is known for making some extremely unique looking products mostly sort of gamer gear stuff so i'm not that shocked that this collaboration has led to the creation of a highly unusual looking 9070 xt so Let's go check this thing out. Okay, so right now this model costs 1400 Australian dollars or 900 US dollars. So it's not that competitively priced, I have to say. And in fact, over in the US, that would make it the most expensive 9070 XT on the market, as you're typically looking at between 700 and 750 dollars US for a 9070 XT over in the US. The $1400 Australian asking price does mean it costs more than the Nitro Plus or a Elite and Red Devil, so not a great start it has to be said. Still pricing can of course change, so assuming things do improve on that front, what does the Mercury Nova OC have on offer? Well as you can see it's certainly a very unique looking product, largely thanks to that fan shroud which Gravistar calls a 3D bionic skeleton. The shroud has been constructed from plastic so it feels a little bit cheap and the metallic paint doesn't quite pull off the illusion that this is anything but plastic, but still it does make for a very distinctive look. And I have to say the car does look much more impressive when powered up. The ARGB lighting effects are very cool and there's also a cable that can be connected directly to your motherboard for easy control of the lighting. Side on, you really do get a good look at those lighting effects and you'll also find a trio of 8-pin power connectors. Then on the rear of the car, there's a large backplate with access to a pair of switches. One allows you to enable slash disable the LED lighting and the other is for the dual bias function. 
The back plate also has some cutouts for air to pass through, and the entire thing has been constructed from aluminium. Design-wise, it's a dark grey with lines etched into the aluminium, creating a cool flow type effect, which is in keeping with the rest of the design. Oddly, however, the PCB's white. I think black would have worked better for this model, but I have to assume this is a repurposed PCB from another Yeston product. Then we have the standard I.O. configuration with three DisplayPort outputs and a single HDMI. I should note there's no GPU stand or mount provided with this product, which is disappointing given the premium price. In fact, all you do get with the card is an RGB extension cable. In total, it measures 332mm long, stands 140mm tall, and is 68mm wide. So it is a very large 9070 XT, though at 1535 grams, it's not overly heavy. Overall, the Yeston slash Gravistar Mercury Nova OC has a long name and a very eccentric look. It's an acquired taste, let's say, so I'm sure some of you will absolutely love it, while others will hate it. That's typically how these things tend to go. Now, if you hated the Yeston slash Gravistar creation, you'll probably love the Power Color Reaper, as it's the complete opposite in every possible way. Firstly, it's cheap, like really cheap, just 1130 Australian dollars, or $700 in the US, which is still $100 over MSRP, mind you, but that's as cheap as 9070 XTs get right now, so in that sense, it is cheap. So in terms of 9070 XT pricing, the Reaper is an entry-level product, and as a result, it's an incredibly simplistic design. There's no RGB lighting here, in fact, no lighting of any kind, there's no dual bias functionality, and really nothing noteworthy to speak of, other than the size. That's because a key feature of the Reaper is just how compact it is. Measuring just 291 millimeters long, it's one of the shortest 9070 XTs on the market, but it's really the height and width that make it by far the most compact. Measuring just 111 millimeters tall, it barely reaches above the IO bracket, and at just 40 millimeters wide, it's the only dual slot 9070 XT that we've managed to come across, and it's possibly the only example on the market. It also weighs just 905 grams, so much lighter than even the Hellhound and Azrock Steel Legend. So that must mean there's not a lot of copper and aluminium under the hood, so I wonder how well it'll cool the 9070 XT, and of course, we will look at that in a moment. Now despite being so compact, there's still three fans and an aluminium backplate with a pass-through area, and then for power input there's just two 8-pin connectors, and on the I.O. you get the standard three display outputs with a single HDMI output. So a very lightweight, compact 9070 XT, I'm very keen to see how the Reaper performs. Now just lastly, after the previous 9070 XT roundup, Gigabyte reached out, informing us that they were surprised by the poor performance of the Gaming OC model, and suspected that there was something wrong with the retail card that we had. So they asked if we could ship that to them, so they could do some internal testing, and they offered to buy us a new model. So a brand new retail model, which we accepted because it'd be cool to have a look at another one. And upon receiving the new retail model, I threw it straight into our test system to try again, but I received the very same results, or very similar results, within a few degrees of what we saw previously. Still, this does give us a good idea of the variation in performance you can expect to see between samples, or at least with this Gigabyte OC model. After an hour of looping F125, we found that the second sample actually saw a 5% increase for the GPU temperature, so it was actually worse, but a 2% reduction for the peak hotspot temperature, so a small improvement there, dropping from 88 degrees with the first sample to 86 degrees with this newer sample, so really much the same. The second sample also saw an increase in memory temperatures, peaking at 78 degrees, a 5% increase over the first sample. The VRM temperatures on the second sample were also 2 degrees hotter, hitting 60 degrees for a 3% increase. Complicating these results though are the core clocks and fan speed. The second sample saw its fans spinning 5% slower, but the average core clock frequency was also 2% lower. So in this example, the second sample was a little bit slower and quieter, though certainly not to the degree that you'd be able to notice. At most, we're really looking at a 5% variance in the results here, and more importantly, our initial testing was accurate. The gaming OC just isn't as good as many other models. It's still very usable with no major issues, it just runs hotter and louder than much of its competition. Now time for testing, and please note while all the previous testing data will be included, I'll be primarily focusing on the Reaper and Mercury Nova OC for this video. 
If you'd like to learn more about the other models tested, please watch the original 9070 XT roundup video. Okay, so for testing, we'll start with the thermal data, which has been recorded after an hour of looping the F1 at 25 benchmark at 4K. For the case, we're using the Antec Flux Pro in the standard configuration with a 360mm AIO mounted in the top, and of course the CPU of choice is the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. All models were tested with an ambient room temperature of 21 degrees, and the same conditions were maintained for the duration of the test. Okay, let's get in the data. Starting with the average GPU temperature, we see that the Reaper peaked at 61 degrees, though it did so with a relatively low fan speed of 1400 RPM. This model does feature a base TBP rating of 304 watts, so it won't clock as high as models using more power, but still, I think for a compact 9070 XT, these results are very good. The Mercury Nova OC wasn't as impressive, coming in last at 65 degrees, though keep in mind it does have a very low fan speed, but still not a great result. The Reaper performed very well when looking at the GPU hotspot temperature, peaking at just 81 degrees, so a great result there given its size. And then we have the Mercury Nova OC, which was again a bit underwhelming, though certainly not bad given the fan speed. Still, the power color Red Devil ran slightly cooler while clocking 7% higher and using more power. As for the memory temperatures, the Reaper and Mercury Nova OC both performed well here, peaking at 82 degrees using Samsung memory. The majority of the best performing models all used Samsung memory and were in the 74 to 75 degree range. That said, the Sapphire Pulse also uses Samsung memory and somehow hit 90 degrees. The Reaper's VRM also ran rather hot, hitting 87 degrees under load, which is a safe temperature, but much higher than some of the other models we've tested. The ASUS Prime, for example, peaked at 73 degrees, and the Gigabyte Gaming OC at just 59 degrees. Then we have the Mercury Nova OC, which did very well here, peaking at just 66 degrees. There are four power levels for 9070 XT GPUs, 304 watts, 317 watts, 330 watts, and 340 watts, and here's a look at how the various models come configured out of the box. Using the default BIOS, the Mercury Nova OC is a 304 watt model, and this is also the only setting for the Reaper. Now here's a look at the GPU power maximum results, in other words, the peak power drawn from each model in our test. The ASRock Tai Chi sucked down the most power, followed by the XFX Mercury. The Mercury Nova OC was found in the middle of the pack, while the Reaper was one of the more conservative models. Now with the card's noise normalized, we ran all the tests again, though please note they're not power normalized. Under these conditions, the Mercury Nova OC ranked much better as more of a mid-pack contender, while the Reaper was just a degree hotter. So again, very impressive there from power color, given how compact the Reaper is. The Mercury Nova OC also looks much better now when checking the GPU hotspot. When noise normalized, it is one of the better performing models at 72 degrees, just four degrees hotter than the very best model. The Reaper was surprisingly good as well, matching the Red Devil's 75 degrees, though be aware the Reaper does use less power. Then we have the memory temperatures, and the Mercury Nova OC is again one of the best performing models at 68 degrees, while the Reaper was also very impressive at 74 degrees, so good results for both models. The Mercury Nova OC did well in the previous VRM testing, so no surprises here to see it delivering some of the best results at 56 degrees. The Reaper remains a poor performer in this test, though I should note once again that 78 degrees is a very safe temperature for these components. I'm not going to waste time going over the game results individually. If you want to take a closer look, then feel free to pause the video. The Mercury Nova OC and Reaper perform as expected based on the board power rating and average clock frequencies, so let's move on. Well, there you have it. We've now checked out 16 RX 9070 XT graphics cards, and the good news is there are no bad models. Some are certainly less impressive than others, but none have any real major flaws that you know, you would make you have to avoid them. The Gigabyte Gaming OC, for example, look, it's not that impressive. And while I wouldn't recommend it, given I think there are better choices for similar money, it does work. It works fine. And I suspect those of you who have one, you're happy enough with the results. The Yeston slash Gravistar Mercury Nova OC is a solid product. It runs nice and quiet, and it includes all the essentials. Overall, I'd say a good product that's currently only let down by the high asking price.
It's really hard to justify spending more on this model over the other premium options from the likes of XFX, Sapphire, and Power Color. Sure, it does look like nothing else, so if that gets you over the line, then fair enough, I guess. But purely in terms of what it offers, it's difficult to justify the current asking price. The Power Color Reaper, on the other hand, is an easy buy. It's amongst the cheapest 9070 XTs on the market, and while it's not exactly feature packed, it really doesn't need to be, and that's kind of the point. It's designed to be a simplistic option that's as compact as possible without being overly compromised. So you're still getting a cool and quiet graphics card that only takes up two slots, and for that alone, I see this being a hugely popular model. Now just lastly, here's a quick look at how things stand at the moment based on current pricing in the US and Australia, or at least what was the current pricing at the time of filming this video, because prices are subject to change and we've seen quite a bit of movement on these 9070 XTs over the past few weeks. I'm very interested to see if the Yeston slash Gravistar Mercury Nova OC drops in price soon. I really hope it does because it's certainly going to appeal to some of you and I think the really unique design will make for some awesome looking builds. Anyway, that is going to do it for this 9070 XT update video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, uh, subscribe. I don't know if there'll be another 9070 XT update video. I don't think there'll be too many more of these things showing up, but you never know. Uh, and yeah, like, subscribe. I think I said that. Uh, we also have the join button. I definitely didn't say that. And Patreon didn't say that either. So you can check those out. I'm um, signing up with either one of those things. will give you access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, Q&A stuff, and behind the scenes content. There's some pretty cool stuff there. So worth checking out. But hey, if you're not interested, I won't hold it against you. That's perfectly fine. I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.